Hello and welcome to another video on Back of the Net. And today, as we approach the end of 2020 and Christmas is just around the corner, this is the final, the final one of these. The cross by Heffernan. And was that a foul? It's a goal anyway from Tuttle. From Tuttle. From Tuttle. And I've got my main man, the man, the myth, the legends, the hero, Tony Funnel with me here today. Hey, you, Tony, how are you? Very well. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas to you too. Uh, yeah, all of you at home, hope you're looking forward to digging into your Christmas dinner. Um, one thing, Tony, I wanted to talk to you about straight away, a bit of topical AFC Bournemouth news. I'm sure you're looking forward to your Christmas dinner, but one thing we don't want to be hearing about is people having a little nibble on the pitch, do we? No, no, that's right. No, definitely not. <laughs> and Jefferson Lerma, uh, AFC Bournemouth's midfielder, has been accused, it's been alleged, that he's had a little um, a little bite at a Sheffield Wednesday player, which is a bit odd because we, we played Sheffield Wednesday a little while ago. So this has kind of come out at an odd time. It has been pointed out to me, Tony, that we are due to play Sheffield Wednesday again quite <laughs> soon. So I don't know. Am I thinking too much into that, do you think? It seems odd that no one's picked this out before. I mean, yeah. was that a game that you saw on the telly? I did. I watched it and I, I've even gone back and I've watched the a replay. I thought you would have done, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a bit, of, I mean, there's some fairly heavy pushing, but um, I didn't see any biting. No, I mean, I've no doubt he did some scrapping, but I, yeah. I couldn't see him biting. But... but I suppose, I mean, I've only but... seen it through one camera. I wonder that's if it, yeah, there's are... so many cameras. And that's, I suppose that's a way that the football has changed now, isn't it? I mean, when you were a player, you didn't, and the majority of games, probably, yeah, almost all your games, you wouldn't have had a camera at, would you? No, definitely not. You know, there's cameras at every angle now. So, uh, I mean, it was great in my day, especially, well, not for me, but for defenders. Yeah. Because they could give you an elbow, they could kick you down the back of the legs. Yeah. I you think know, Tommy Heffernan's probably watching this, rubbing his hands together, getting all excited, Tony, at those words. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I suppose as well, sometimes, I mean, I know you're not the type of player to do it, Tony, but for the odd striker, you know, they might want to give a little elbow before they shoot off and, and you know, you wouldn't get away with it now, would you? No, definitely not. No. no. Is the game better off, Tony, for it or not? You tell me. Um... I don't know. I do think there is too. There's too many cameras, yeah. and I'm still not convinced on bar. No goodness. There's Let's hope many, that's not. You know, Game stopped too many times. Yeah, and we're always we we're always in doubt. Have we scored? Was it offside? Yeah, it's not a fun sense of anticipation, is it? You know. It's um, it's just it just take it just sucks the joy out of it completely. I, I completely agree with you, Tony. I do think there's more people that watch a game, and with normal circumstances, they'll be jumping up and down when yeah, the ball's yeah. gone in, and they they hesitate, they wait, yeah. and that takes a lot of enjoyment out of it. It does, and there's nothing more crushing because I've been there than to jump up and go yes, and then turn around and go ah. Oh, you know, because the first thing you do, I mean, the first thing we've done for years, isn't it? We celebrate, we look over at the linesman. Oh, he ain't got his flag up. We don't look at the referee. He's seems fine. Yeah, hey. But now there's that whole extra bit. I mean, thankfully, we haven't got it in the championship at the moment. No. No, probably, probably what's happening is the uh, referees and linesmen are saying, hang on a minute. Let them all give a good cheer. Get them all excited. <laughs> and yeah. then we'll go to VAR. <laughs> Yeah, That'll mess them up. <laughs> yeah, yes. Stop the park. Are you ready? No, we're just going to wait until they've they, they've settled down, and then we'll upset them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Uh, well, one thing that doesn't upset me, Tony, is the final look at our league table for 2020. So here is your top five. Little movement for anybody in the final show of the year. That's especially true of our Nige, who's sticking in fifth. Jamie is another non-mover, holding on tightly to his end of his Christmas cracker in fourth. Paul Bellamy is making himself comfortable in third. He's got his slippers on, the cocoa's ready. He's not going anywhere as he settles down to watch Die Hard. Yes, it is a Christmas movie. Zachariah has dropped a spot. 
from first to second, no doubt weighed down by all those Christmas cards and fan mail he got last week when he was top. But at number one, you can't keep a good cherry down for long, and Alan greets Christmas Day top of our league. And that is the last look at our league that we're going to see in 2020. We'll be back again when you pull all those Christmas decorations away in 2021, uh, just hoping that we can return and do more of this and that there is football. God, please let there be football. Yeah, and uh, here is the rest of that league table, Tony. And chiefly, we're going to find out where you are. And you are in a rather comfortable 14th. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, my aim at the moment is to be in the top 10 for the start of the new year. Yeah. And I can put in my challenge. Your challenge, yeah, for the top. Yeah. Yeah. See, Stephen there, Tony, he's fallen out of the top 10. Uh, Naomi's holding on there in seventh. We've got a few names that have returned here. Steve Hensman, Gwyneth Short. Who spoke. Brian Baxter, he's new. Not seen him in the top 10 before. So uh, still everything to play for. And you're on 175 points. There's a lot of people on 175 points. That's it. There's a few. And if we get to the top 175, what is it? 118 for the top five or yeah 180 for well nigel little 185 so only 10 away that's yeah. two two on the nose and, and you're, you're well up there aren't you i know i've said it before you've got to get those correct scores and it's so difficult it is really difficult. i mean picking the man united game against leeds i went for three one i thought well, that won't be a bad three one you know united has scored two or three goals I yeah. couldn't see him scoring six goals. No, I know. Mind no, you, I what know. was funny, Man United, I was watching the game and uh, I follow Man United and I think they were they were four up and I turned around to my wife and said, I'm not sure if we're going to win the game though. <laughs> no. He just kept attacking. The Man United, they're shaky at the back. So, yeah, they're relentless in their attack leads, aren't they? And uh, it doesn't, they didn't seem to have a, didn't seem to, break their confidence um no because most teams the manager, good, it? well the managers told him how to play yeah. and he wants them to keep attacking so whether you know they're level or they're losing two or three nil they just keep going and keep going i read an interesting article about teams that get promoted uh from the championship to the to the premier league and it said that teams that um come up with a strong defensive unit if they can get a few more goals here and there, they're actually more likely to stay up than teams that can come up that can attack but aren't as adept at defending because of the quality in players that you suddenly meet. If you can defend reasonably well, you'll be okay. But if defending is not your thing, then chances are you will go back down. So I'm really interested to see if, if Leeds can keep up this... Um, well, if they, can, if they can keep their nerve and carry on playing the way they are, or they are because most teams don't. No, I think um, it'll be good if Leeds do stay up playing the way they're playing. Good for football. Yeah, and then next season, Bournemouth go up and send them down. So that would um, suit me just fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, one thing, Tony, I just uh, noticed um, you gave a wonderful piece of advice last week to all our friends out there in, in YouTube land to get your predictions in early. But something a bit funny has happened this week, Tony, that actually has actually possibly put people in a dangerous position if they took your advice. What's happened, Tone? Yeah, well, what with the Bournemouth game yeah. uh, being cancelled, I've already, uh, the first day I found this out, I WhatsApped my family to say, if you've put your bets on early, don't, you know, the Bournemouth match has been cancelled, so you've got to re-pick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's a shame. That, I, mean, I shouldn't uh, have done it. I shouldn't have done it because they're ahead of me. What am I? What am I telling them? This you could have got. You could have got one over them. There we go. You're just such an honest guy, Tony. That's your problem. Um, yeah, I, it's very odd that the Bournemouth game has been has been postponed because of too many Millwall players having COVID. Apparently, is the reason. And they're not the only team as well. I think another team have had it. Is it Ipswich. I might be wrong there. So don't. I'm not need to check. But uh, it is a bit disappointing for anyone looking forward to a bit of cherry action on boxing day but they've got brentford you know coming up a couple of days after so um you know yeah, extra yeah. rest that's right yeah and not many footballers get boxing day off do they tony 
They don't. I'm not quite I'm not sure, sure if it's, sure it's a good, good thing or a bad thing, because although it would be nice to spend that Boxing Day with a family, mm. um, you are used to be playing football on a Boxing Day. And we said at the very start, the championship is a long, hard slog. Don't yeah. want to start playing catch up with too many games in quick succession later on in the season. No, you don't. No, you don't. Unless you're sitting pretty at the top, in which case, you know, we'll take the games in hand. But, you know, at the yeah. moment, we're, we're not quite that secure. Right. We'll have a little look at the games we've got coming up. So the first game, Tony, here is we've got Aston Villa against Palace. Now, uh, the villains, they faced Palace after they got a win at West Brom. And Palace took a, a battering, didn't they, against Liverpool? Yeah, I mean, Villa, their last three games, they've done quite well. Mm. Um, and so Palace got a hammer in against Liverpool. I'm, I, I could have egg on my face because these are the obvious uh, things you talk about. But I yeah. am going for 2-1 uh, to Villa. Yeah, I feel like they've turned a corner a bit. Um now i agree with you uh two on tony and uh, we'll move along here uh fulham tone they've got uh got quite a reputation at the moment for drawing a lot of games and they drawing the last three yeah yeah and southampton you know they can be ruthless can't they yeah i think southampton to be too good for them too strong and i'm going for two one to southampton because Fulham have been scoring the odd goal, so... Yeah, they have, and I, I sort of I feel for them. I got the feeling, again, I might be totally wrong, and if there's any Fulham fans out there, I'm sorry if I, if I upset you, but um, they just still, like the last time they come up, they just don't feel quite, to me, don't feel quite prepared for, for what's ahead of them, but um, no. I might be wrong. Might be wrong. Uh, Blackburn against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. We've been talking about Wednesday already. They have a lot to do, Sheffield Wednesday, to get out of the situation they're in. Um, Blackburn are probably going to be the favourites here, but what does Tony Funnel think? Tony? Yeah, I mean, Sheffield Wednesday, obviously, they'll be hard to beat because mm. they'll start their defence and uh, it'll be hard to break them down. But I think Blackburn will be too good for them. And they, they do score goals, Blackburn, so I'm going 2 0 Blackburn. Yeah. I'll go with that as well. Uh, interesting, you talk about stacking the defence, Tony. We talked about Bournemouth against Luton. We did a little preview for that, the two of us, and they did exactly what we thought Luton would do. They really made it tricky for Bournemouth, you know, five along that back line. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, I, how do you play against teams like that? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this is an interesting one. Tony, a bit of a joke in here. We've got the birds against the bees here, birds and the bees. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, what can I say about this? Um, Cardiff and Brentford, both strong teams. What do you think might happen? Yeah, I do see a bit of Brentford in the last game. And uh, they look quality. A couple of moves going forward mm. are really class. I'm going for 2-1 Brentford. They're doing really well, Brentford, aren't they? Really well, well. They, they, they picked up recently, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just shows you, doesn't it? If you if your spine's quite strong, if you lose a few players, it, it doesn't matter too much. You can well, it does matter, but you can you can find a way. Uh, and another two-one Tony, fantastic. And we're moving down now to Barnsley against Huddersfield. Barnsley lost out to Swansea last time, um, and H Huddersfield, interestingly, because of their last win, they've seen off another Watford manager. I don't think Watford. Yes. Is, Watford have had so many. I think if you go back, I saw this on Twitter. Somebody did this on Twitter. If you go back the amount of managers that Watford have into in Bournemouth's timeline of managers, you end up back in like 1979, Tony. Yeah, we, we did talk about the start of the season with uh, Eddie leaving and, yeah. uh, you know, what would happen. And we both agreed that if um, if they promote from within... Mm. then you keep the club you hold the club together whereas you know sometimes when you keep chopping managers and then different managers got different ideas with different players and different systems can cause lots of problems and, and cost lots of money yeah it must be costing them an absolute fortune to be keep paying these people off i'm sure they must be paying wages for some managers who've you know three or four managers ago probably still 
Yeah. Yeah, it's not like the old days when the manager would be paid off with probably about five, six grand. <laughs> no, exactly. No, the contracts are way too big now. Uh, but anyway, back to the game. Um, I, I can't pick this one, Tony. What do you think might happen? I actually think they're going to fight out a score draw, one all. Oh, nice. We don't get enough of those, do we? On this, we, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, we'll slide across here. I think this is probably our last one. We've got Coventry against uh, Stoke. Um, I might be wrong here, Tony, but looking at both of these teams and, and how they play and their recent results, I'm not really expecting a lot of goals. What are you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't expecting that to come up because I've not written that down on my sheet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, I guess, is this, the ball, is this the one that's replaced the Bournemouth one, maybe? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, so, yeah, I've Coventry got, I've Stoke. I've got Villa, Fulham... Cardiff, Forest. Oh, Blackburn. Forest, no Forest. Yeah. Who were Forest playing? Do you know who Forest were playing? Birmingham. Oh. Don't know what's happened there then. Don't know what's so, right, there. let's have a quick a quick look. Let, let me have a look. Let me, look. let me show you the stats. Here we go. Little little treat, guys. This is what it's like. So, we got there. We got a loss, a draw. Now, look, look at this. if you look at their scores, nil nil. There's a 2 1 Tony in there, 0 0. Well, was a 3 1 for Coventry, 1 all. And then we look at Stoke, 1 0, 0 0, 0 0. 2 1 Tony, 1 0, 1 0. So, I mean, I suppose Stoke have, on recent form, look a little bit better. Um, but they're not a free, neither, I don't think either of them, I wouldn't call either of them a free scoring side. Other no, people were it's, expecting a Pope win. It is an away game, isn't it? For both teams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I always forget about that. You're spot on. See, that's why you had Birmingham written down. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, I'm going to go for 2-1 Coventry because they do score goals. But, as I said last week, it might be an occasion where when I look a little bit deeply, deeper and study it a little bit more, I might change it on the Saturday, on the, yeah, on the Boxing Day. You never know. No, you never know. The trouble yeah. is, if I, if I change it and the result is what I've said... Oh, you feel I'll awful, wouldn't you? Gutted. I know, yeah. yeah. Completely. I feel awful as, as well because I'll probably copy that one. Uh, maybe maybe <laughs> it is. I've been saying it all season. Maybe it is a 2-1 Boxing Day because I've got a few down in my list here. You've got a lot down in your list here. It's, it's, a, it's a definitely it's a two-one week. Okay, Tony. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna lock all that in. Let's go back a little bit here. Golden goal prediction. Oh, it's got to be the fourth. It's got to be the fourth. Okay, and then go to head to heads with Jeff. We we'll challenge that. Submit our entry, and we are done. Brilliant. Flashing. So that's it now, Tone. Our, our, we, you and I, will have to catch up in the new year then. Do a bit more of this. Yeah, looking forward to it. Well, I'm really hoping, Tony, that I remember you and I, we did <laughs> last March, we sat down and we did a funnel forecast that never saw air because we were talking about games that um, were ne never happened, did they? Because No, that's right, no. Because of, of the COVID restrictions that came in, we went into lockdown and there is a murmur of this 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 strain out there that might cause us to go back into a lockdown situation. I don't know how that would affect football. I'm really hoping it doesn't affect football too much, but you're already seeing games like Millwall being called off. It is a little bit annoying. I'm, try I'm trying to use a nicer word than the one I ought to use. Um, what do you think, Tone? Do you think we're going to be all right? Yeah, I don't think hopefully not too many games will be cancelled. I think it is understandable if, like, if just say for instance, if it was Bournemouth that had two or three players down, yeah, and, and not all these clubs have got big squads, have they? No, they haven't. So, um, you know, I, I don't know what the conditions have to be for you to cancel your game. Yeah, I think it's a weird scenario because you've got two things going on here, you, you might have some key players out. You might also have your 
team that you're playing, the opposition team, turn around saying, do you know what? Don't actually want you anywhere near us at the no. minute because, you know, you're riddled with it. <laughs> see, well, true, because those players that have got it have yeah. been training with the other players. So maybe it is only if, if one or two at the most, whatever, yeah. and that's it. You have to cancel it to, for the safety of the other team. So, yeah. I suppose what we can say is, you know, the best part of a year now, we've been behind doors um, for a lot of football. So maybe worst case scenario, um, fans, the, the fans thing is, is pulled again, unfortunately. But, you know, the football will, will probably continue. Yes, fingers crossed. And on that note, uh, Tony and I are both wishing you all a happy Christmas and making sure that you are pleased, safe and uh, together. Any final words, Tony, before we go? No, exactly what I was going to say. Merry Christmas and stay safe. Fantastic. And if you get a chance this Christmas, make sure you pull a cracker for us. See you later. Adios. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>